What's cooking guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is very special because you guys have been highly highly requesting this chicken biryani recipe but I'm also going to the source of my family who cooks the best food and that is my mom obviously. She's going to be making chicken biryani for all of you. For those of you who don't know what biryani is, biryani is a delicious layered medley of meat and rice along with other flavorful hints of spices, notes of tart and sweetness all mixed in harmony with each other. For today's video, I'm not going to be listing the ingredients on the screen like I usually do because it's just too many ingredients and spices, but they will be all listed down below in the description box, so you definitely want to check that out. Do consider subscribing if you're new here and you'd like to join my foodie family. And also hit the bell icon so you're notified every time I upload a new video. And now let's get cooking. Let's start by making the rice part of the biryani first. We're going to be using the Royal Chef's Secret Basmati Rice. We used 4 cups of rice here but you can use it depending on how much biryani you make. You should be using good quality basmati rice with long grains for sure. There's no substitutions here from basmati to any other kind of rice. You can find quality basmati rice from any Indian or Pakistani stores. Wash the rice thoroughly a few times under cold water. My mom is gently pressing the rice through her fingers so any dirt on the rice can come off. This is an important step and rice should always be washed completely through. Get rid of the water as you wash the rice and once you have the water clear that means the rice is cleaned properly. Heat up a large pot to cook the rice with a lot of water in it and add some salt to taste here. To this my mom is going to be adding one teaspoon of cumin seeds, about three bay leaves, one cinnamon stick, two star anise, one teaspoon fennel seeds, and about five to eight pieces of whole cloves. And we're adding all those spices into the water to cook the rice in it and to flavor it up. Mix these up in the water so they can release their flavor. Also add about a tablespoon of oil so the rice doesn't stick together and is more fluffy when it cooks. And once the water boils, you can gently add the washed four cups of basmati rice in there. And then stir it all up so everything is mixed together. Let the rice cook and come to a boil. We will only be cooking the rice to about 80% so for about 15 to 20 minutes. Just like you would when you cook pasta and you cook it till it's only al dente. The rice will finish cooking at the end with the meat. Let's drain the water out now. You can use a strainer but this is my mom's method. It works and we stick to it. I apologize for all the steam on my camera lens but you can set aside the 80% cooked rice for now. Now let's move on to preparing the chicken masala part of the dish. I have a handful of fresh mint leaves here from my mom's garden. We have three medium sized tomatoes here sliced. I have a cup of dried prunes here which will add a sweet tone to the dish. And one whole lime sliced thinly, you can also use lemon and a handful of chopped coriander leaves or cilantro. We have about eight garlic cloves chopped here, two heaping tablespoons of minced fresh ginger, and two large onions sliced very thinly. And these are the aromatics and toppings for the biryani. My mom is also cutting up four medium-sized peeled potatoes here in big chunks, but you can also cut them in quarters, but not smaller than that. And these potatoes are optional in this dish. And of course, we can't forget the chicken for the biryani. This is one and a half chickens, so probably about five to seven pounds total. Cleaned and washed thoroughly as usual. And these are all the spices for the biryani. I know it looks like a lot, but this is the most important part of this recipe, so you want to pay attention here. In a coffee or spice grinder, we will add half of a cinnamon stick, two pieces star anise, about half a teaspoon of fresh mace spice, which is good to get rid of starch. Four whole cloves. Half teaspoon of whole peppercorns. One tablespoon of coriander seeds. 
one tablespoon dried fenugreek, about eight whole cardamom pods, one heaping tablespoon of fennel seeds, which are great for digestion, two whole black cardamoms, which are also very important for biryani, one heaping tablespoon of cumin seeds, half of a whole nutmeg, and about four bay leaves. You want to grind all the spices till they are in powder form. Now you must be wondering where to get all these spices, but they can very easily be found in Indian or Pakistani stores, which you can find in your local towns easily as well. You can jar this biryani spice mix and store it until you're ready to use it. But this mix of spices smells so aromatic and fragrant and is a must to use when making homemade biryani. We're going to be using half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, red chili powder to taste and salt to taste as well along with the biryani spice mix that i'm going to put on this plate as well so we are now in her backyard to cook the biryani in her outdoor kitchen area and this is her fresh mint that i showed earlier how beautiful does this look so we are now cooking the sliced onions in about half a cup or as needed of oil this is canola or vegetable oil that she's using we are going to be dividing this onion in half later. We are going to brown them nicely, but the more caramelized ones will be for the topping, which gives it a sweet flavor and a slight crispy texture. So you can remove those on a plate for later, but the other half will cook in the chicken masala to act as an aromatic. To the rest of the onions still in the pot, you can add the eight chopped garlic cloves and the two heaping tablespoons of minced fresh ginger. Mix it around so the aromatics can flavor the dish nicely and cook this on medium high heat for a few minutes. And now let's add the one and a half chickens in there and stir it around to cook the chicken. As usual, and this is a trick I learned from my mom, you must cook the chicken till all its own natural juices have cooked off and evaporated. As the chicken cooks, she is adding in the four potatoes that she cut into chunks. Potatoes are totally optional in biryani, but I love how they taste with all the spices. Mix everything up so it can all cook together and keep stirring it and cooking it on medium high heat. You can see after about five to 10 minutes, it's starting to brown and its own juices have evaporated. Now to this, she is adding the biryani spice mix she showed you guys how to make earlier and the turmeric powder, the red chili powder and the salt to taste. Now mix all the spices together so it can coat the chicken and potatoes really well. And as I mixed it, she added about a quarter cup of plain yogurt to it, which added a creaminess and rich flavor. And also she added one cup of crushed tomatoes to make the masala gravy. You can make your own tomato puree here by using fresh tomatoes instead. Mix it all up and this is already starting to look really good. Add a little water here as you need for the potatoes to cook. Mix it again and then cover so it can cook properly. After 10 minutes of cooking, look at how beautiful and rich this is looking. The bright red color and the oil has released as well, but the potatoes still need some time to cook. You can add additional water here because the potatoes need it and then cover and cook it for another few minutes till the potatoes are tender. Now that the potatoes have cooked through, this chicken masala is done completely. Let's add some fresh coriander or cilantro leaves to this and some of that fresh mint leaves from her backyard. She also added some of those dried prunes I showed you earlier, which add a sweetness. But if you don't like prunes, you can omit this from the dish. She's also topping this masala with some lime slices and the crispy fried onions we did earlier. And now to layer the biryani, she is adding all the four cups of cooked rice. If you like, you can make several layers here but it really doesn't make a big difference at the end since it's mixed together. Top it off with the rest of the fried onions, the rest of the sliced limes, or you can use lemons as well, and the sliced fresh tomatoes I showed earlier in the video. And now my mom is quickly mixing some orange food coloring in cold milk. She used one third teaspoon here, but use as you need to. And you can use yellow, red, or orange food coloring. Pour the milk onto the rice here, which will seep through the rice. And then top it off with the chopped coriander leaves again, and the rest of the fresh mint leaves. And if you don't have mint, it's totally optional. But since my mom grows it in her backyard, this came to good use. And now you want to cover this up 
and we transferred this back to her in her kitchen and turned the heat on medium at first for five minutes and then lowered it all the way down so the biryani can cook in its own steam for about 30 minutes and after 30 minutes the biryani is done and wow just look at how beautiful that looks it truly looks so authentic and official you want to mix it up gently so the rice doesn't break but to also fluff it up a little the rice got to cook in its own steam for 30 minutes so now it's 100 percent done let's plate it because i don't have time to wait as this looks so good and my mom gave me a generous plating of her ultimate chicken biryani this classic rice dish is rich in flavor but it wasn't overly spicy in terms of heat either it had the most perfect flavors you want to serve it with some raita which is a yogurt sauce with cucumbers tomatoes and onions in it and i know you want a plate of this flavorful chicken biryani so let me know in the comments below if you'll be trying this out at home as well So that is it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed my mom's recipe for chicken biryani if you'd like to see more recipes with my mom let me know in the comments below i'd love to do more i had a really great time with her making and learning how to make chicken biryani i do know how to make chicken biryani but it can be a little overwhelming because of the tons of spices that go in it so i wanted to share with you the ultimate chicken biryani recipe and my mom makes the best one of them all make sure to like comment share and subscribe before leaving i'll be seeing you in the next one guys until then take care of yourselves <laughs>